Hello, it's Scott Manley here standing, well I couldn't stand on the cliff top because my hat kept on blowing off, so I'm standing as far back from the edge as uh, the wind will let me. So it's another one of these uh, basically videos disambiguating science, trying to clear up some common misconceptions, and one I want to address is black holes. Now black holes are of course the vacuum cleaners of the cosmos, and many people think of them as horrifically destructive forces. If you have a black hole in your solar system, everything is going to go into it and get destroyed. And that simply isn't true. If you took the Earth and turned it into a black hole, it'd be about one inch across, maybe three centimeters, and it would basically make no difference to the solar system. The moon would still orbit in its same orbit, all the other planets wouldn't notice it, and maybe the only thing that would notice would be meteors that would normally hit the atmosphere. They would kind of swing past because they could get closer to the, the gravitational source without uh, messing things up. You see, it's the mass is the same, it's just compressed into a smaller area. Same would happen with the sun. So that's what a black hole is. It's, it's almost like a point source. Now there is a limit to how close you can get to the black hole, of course, and that's called the event horizon. Anything closer than that ha ends up going inside it because it can't orbit fast enough. And the reason it can't orbit fast enough is because the fundamental speed limit of the universe is the speed of light. The event horizon is basically the point at which any orbit will bring, any orbit will go inside the black hole, but you can't get any closer. Now, the other misconception I've seen a lot is that black holes are stupendously dense. And this is true, but it's not true for every black hole. You see, I said if you took the Earth and you squeezed it down to about you know three centimeters across, uh, that would be a black hole. Uh, if you took the Sun, it would be about six kilometers across, right? And basically, you can calculate the radius of a black hole by figuring out its mass in solar masses and multiplying that by 2.95 kilometers. And there, you see that as the mass goes up, the radius grows linearly, the radius of the event horizon. Now, you calculate the density of a black hole by dividing its mass by its volume. And if you know basic high school math, then you'll know that the volume of a sphere is four-thirds pi r cubed. So the radius goes up linearly, but the, de the volume inside it goes up by the cubic power, which means as a black hole's mass goes up, the actual density goes down by the square of the mass. So while the sun compressed into a black hole would be unimaginably dense, if you take something, say, a hundred million solar masses, like the supposed object near the core of the, of the galaxy, its density would be much lower. In fact, it could be lower than water, depending upon how dense it is. As you get even bigger, the density gets lower still, and you could have imaginary black holes that are denser than, say, the atmosphere. Now, if you were to take this to a logical conclusion, there are some versions of cosmology where we talk about dark matter and missing mass. We talk about, you remember uh, the Big Crunch versus the Big Bang, which is kind of what would happen if the universe were to grow out and then collapse back in because gravity was too strong. That would be living inside a black hole. And if you look at space out there, if there's just enough matter, then we could be inside a black hole. But it wouldn't look like a black hole, it'd be mostly empty space. It would be basically practically zero density. But what matters is the ultimate mass. So there you go. Black holes can actually be very low density, uh, not stupendously high density. And so yeah, that ends my little, little spiel. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.